Hello, folks. Welcome to Wayfarer VCV Rack Patches. I'm your host, Dr. Lawrence W. Moore of the Wayfarer Project. In this episode, I'm going to be doing two main things. First of all, I'm going to be going over the uh, different approaches to using MIDI controllers with VCV Rack. Uh, basically, how to map knobs and sliders on your MIDI controller to have them work within VCV Rack. There's two approaches and which approach will work better in different situations and stuff like that are the things that we'll be looking at. Uh, the second aspect of this episode is going to be looking at the Squinky Labs module called Organ Time that is a Hammond organ emulating module. And so I think before we go on to the learning, I'm just going to do a quick little demo so you can see what this will be all about. So let's take a look at this here. All right, so here's a patch that I made. I'll be building this patch again with you so that we could uh, look at these concepts and uh, the different things involved. But front and center there is the organ time module. It has a number of features to it, like the draw bar sliders that a Hammond organ would have. And then we also have, uh, I have those mapped to sliders on my controller. And then we also have the two knobs in the upper left of the module that are for attack and release. So you have those features. And I also mapped to my controller the two knobs in the upper right corner that are for the percussive attack. You need to have your attack turned all the way down so it's a quick attack. And then you can benefit from. Turn down the release there a bit. And then the other percussive attack option that adds a little more ring to it. And we would benefit from a little modulation, I believe. just doing amplitude modulation at this point um, but basically I wanted to do this simple patch first and as I am working on some music right now and been exploring the Hammond organ as well as some other Hammond uh, organ like uh, devices from the middle of the 20th century like the 1830s uh, and early 40s through the 50s um, you know, I've been kind of like hearing them and wanting to work with sounds like that a little bit. And as I go further and further, I might update you with some future patches that have uh, a few more features in them. But at this point, we have an amplitude modulation that we can control the speed of just using the MIDI controller. So no mouse action necessary. Now, this overall um, patch may be of interest for those who are looking to map MIDI controllers. It may be of interest to those who are looking to uh, work with a Hammond organ emulator. Uh, and it may be interested to people that are wanting to do both because believe it or not, it's kind of cool to be able to move sliders on the controller keyboard and knobs on the controller keyboard to morph the sound. Um, it's a little bit more like having a tactile instrument in front of you. 
So without further ado, we're going to see how I built this patch and talk about some of the concepts along the way. And I hope you join me for the ride. Alrighty then, here we go. Okay, so here we are in VCV Rack um, with my setup here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to delete everything except for the audio output here. Now, I assume by this point you worked with VCV Rack enough to know your audio output settings and what you want there. Um, if not, I do have some tutorials on this channel to help you with VCV Rack. Learn Synthesis with VCV Rack, um, Series 1 through 4. I will be uh, doing a second iteration of that series uh, coming up shortly, and that will probably be on the new learning channel that I will be launching. There will still be learning here at the regular Wayfarer Project channel, but I wanted to have one where it's just about the software and the concepts, and then this channel will be about my interests and in what I'm doing with my music. And of course that will also involve VCV rack. So let's get some MIDI modules here um, so we can get started. The first one we're going to work with is your standard MIDI in that basically takes, oops, that's your CC. Well, we're going to talk about that too a little bit, but this is the one that I was actually wanting to. <laughs> bring in so let's get that up here so i am going to set it for my midi device it's a launch key novation launch key mark three and um, this one will be bringing in our midi notes and gates like basically when you're pressing the key what key did you press and then you know um when it was pressed and when it's released so you always want that module if you're going to be playing a keyboard at all. And then I'm just going to type into the search here, organ, and we'll get the uh, organ time module here from Squinky Labs. It is a free module, and so there's no barriers to downloading this one. I'm going to take the output here. Now, a lot of times you don't do this with a module. You want to set up a gate first so it doesn't just play audio at you but in this case it has the attack and release built in so when you hook it up well i'm full of shit uh <laughs> well i should hook up the gate first because actually yes it does um <laughs> i'm gonna leave that in i like to have fun they're gonna hook up the gate here and then we're gonna hook up the audio at least I explained that concept a little bit more thoroughly. Trial and error. All right, so, yeah, until I press a key, you know, we don't hear anything. <clears throat> Which is usually the way you like it. <clears throat> All right, so now, um, as you see here, the attack and release knobs... will control the attack and release on the notes. So that's always cool uh, to have your gate stuff built in. It doesn't have an ADSR, but then I don't believe the early Hammond organs had ADSR. They had attack release, if I remember my learnings correctly. Now you see down here we have inputs for attack and release. One way of mapping MIDI is to take this one here that's called MIDI CC, meaning MIDI Continuous Controller to CV. And what you can do is set that for 
your MIDI device. It could even be a separate one. If you have a, a device with sliders and knobs on it, and then one that just has a keyboard. Um, I have a keyboard here that has both. So there's eight knobs and there's nine sliders. Great, because there's actually nine draw bars here. And that's just, yeah, spectacular because um, a lot of times those types of controls are in groups of eight. Eight knobs, for example, is what I got. And a lot of times there's eight sliders too. But um, this Novation, I guess, uh, they decided to put nine on there. So you could do eight. Like if you're mixing tracks, you could do eight tracks and then have a ninth one there for the master. But in any case, I'm using it for organ time. So what you do is on this MIDI to CC is you click one of these slots here to um, recognize what knob you're turning. And there we go. I just turned that knob. It's MIDI controller number 21. And then what we could do is hook up a cable. I like to use yellow for control signals. Up to attack right there. This first one here corresponds to the first slot up here. See, there's four slots on the first level, four outputs on the first level. And so you can visually align them with each row and column below. And now, since I hooked that up, I'm turning the knob and nothing, nothing. <laughs> That's great. Am I? No, it. It did receive MIDI because I did get the uh, right controller number here. It it sensed MIDI controller 21. And, uh, well, actually, you know what? I didn't see the knob move here, but let's see if it sounds anyway. It does. There we go. I turned it all the way up. That's a really slow attack. But, as you see, the knob doesn't visually move. So that is one of the aspects of doing this MIDI CC to CV module. You do have to connect a cable. And there, so obviously there needs to be an input for whatever knob or slider or GUI interface item you want to control. If there isn't an input then you can't use this and um, also you have the the unfortunate aspect that the knobs will not turn visually with what you're doing but you can do this if you really want to do something where you see where you're patching to and stuff like that uh, there are some things that give you a visual feedback because I've used this module with um, the mind meld mixer a very popular mixer for audio signals in vcv rack and uh, basically you see like this green audio signal moving on the uh, fader uh, section so that way you actually do see some visual interaction there the uh, the thing is you won't see the fader itself move you would just see like a green led moving now this doesn't have this. So actually this might be a great time to use another option for mapping MIDI controllers. So I'm going to type in MIDI again. And it's this one right here. This one is um, just called MIDI map. And uh, the benefit of this one is you can map it to something that is a control in BCV Rack. There I set it for my MIDI device. And now what we want to do here, you can select the individual channel if you want. Default all channels, which is fine. And here we have like a grayed out item in the list that says unmapped. This you can left click on and it gets highlighted. Then you turn the controller that you want to use. And you see it senses controller 21. After you see that light up, then the next thing you want to do is touch what you want it to control. There we go. And so it puts the uh, GUI object name 
in here so you know what it's controlling. And now you see down here, mapping. If you touch another item like release, it'll map to that as well. So you see, um, it's listing the second item right below this. So controller 21 is controlling the attack as well as the release. You don't see an additional controller indicator here because it's associated with this one. And you could even map more things to it. So this also has the benefit of being able to map multiple items. Now the other one that I showed you could too. Um, you can hook up a second cable by, in this example, you know, connecting a cable to it from release and it'll accept two cables being hooked up to it. But once again, we had other reasons for wanting to use this. So that's what we're doing. Now, if you want to get rid of something, it's right click. Now you see, it's just listing the grayed out unmapped item here, which means it's ready to receive more. Okay. Now, if you wanted to do this again, you know, I just select that left click here, mapping, and then just move the knob. And because this is the uh, second one in, because this was the highlighted one in the list and I touched uh, a GUI object, it knows to associate it with the controller above. So now if I move this knob, you will see both the attack and the release are moving in synchronization there. But I don't want that. I want to use a second knob to control this. So, and there it, it actually now is showing you that it's a, a second controller 21. Okay. I'm going to delete this. That was space to add another one where you saw CC21 and then a blank next to it. And then, so I'm right clicking to take these out. All right, there we go. Now what we do is hit this unmapped button again. And this time I'm going to touch another controller knob on my keyboard. Okay, which is CC22, which makes sense. Then I left click over here. There we go. Controller 22 is now released. I can move attack and release and they're different. That's release. That's attack. Now, I am not hearing multiple pitches because <laughs> I didn't hook up the uh, volt per octave output there. There we go. So now we're hooked up. Okay. And so we got those knobs hooked up. As long as this is grayed out, it's not sensing anything. But I like to right-click to clear those. You will always see an unmapped here grayed out um, at the bottom so that you could always put in another one. So now what I'm going to do is the sliders here. So I'm going to left-click here, move the slider, move the draw bar. What the heck? I think I clicked something wrong there. Hold on here. Let's get rid of that. Let's just clear these. I uh I did some something wrong. So I'm gonna left click on No, I don't want controller twenty one. Twenty one and twenty two are already assigned. Click this, move the slider, and it's saying seventy one. That's the controller number for it. Click here. That's enough. I don't even need to move the slider. There we go. You see the draw bar is now being controlled. And so what we can do here is make sure we don't add another thing to controller 71. So we right click to get that out of there. Left click, move the slider on the keyboard, then click the slider I want it to control on the module. Now you see it has a second listing here for CC22, I mean 72, excuse me. 
so I can map it to another item and I don't want to do that so I'm going to left click here and left click on the slider there oh I'm sorry left click there I move the slider and now click on the graphic object there we go after a bit you're going to get used to it as you can tell I haven't just yet gotten smooth at it but here, let's right click this one out of here okay it doesn't take it out here let me do this because I don't want extra spaces in there so let's click those things out of there that's what happens when you get things out of order move the physical slider click the graphic slider there we go now let's move the next physical slider click the graphic slider Okay, and you see it's highlighted there, so I can just move to the next one. So when you do get smooth at it, and you're careful, then you're good. And now this one is on... Yeah, let's click that so it doesn't associate it with 75. So I did 71, 2, 3, four five and now i'm going to move the uh six slider on my controller one two three four five six now you see it's waiting here so i'm moving the seventh slider and clicking it here and you see it's waiting again well nope it's got that one up. So I'm going to move the eighth slider. Well, let's click this. Eighth. Eighth. And now it's sensing again. So I can move ninth. Ninth. There we go. So let's double check these. I'm going to move them all down. First, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. Eight, nine. There we go. And then I have, I, I still have a, a third and fourth knob here that I can assign to these guys. Um, now, if you wanted to do this in a different order, you would, maybe if I wanted to do the four knobs together first, then the sliders, I should have done them in a different order. But I can just click here. If you're not worried about the order, click here. And then click here again uh, let's see we don't need hold on here what am I doing I like this third knob click here this is already highlighted fourth knob click here And then it wants to do another 74. Sometimes I think I accidentally bought, bumped the knob, and so it's trying to do it again. And so you just got to be careful about what you're tapping or moving because it's listening and uh, stuff like that. And I don't think you can move these. It would be nice to move this up here. Nope. So you're kind of stuck with the order that you give it. Uh, the first patch I made had them in the right order, so everything's fine. I guess I could always go back to that one. But anyway, there we go. So that's um, the two main ways of mapping MIDI controllers. And um, yeah, so it's not really all that hard. I make it harder than, <laughs> than it needs to be. Now, there's something else I'm going to do, because right now, hold on, let's set these. That's what it sounds with all the draw bars down.
and I'm set to um, monophonic mode <clears throat> by default, I guess. Uh, this is a polyphonic module, so I can set it to like an eight note polyphony, for example. <laughs> So the main thing you want to do is, since you're going to use these VCV modules, they're polyphonic. This is polyphonic. If you decide to put any other modules in for um, processing the sound and so forth, you want to make sure that they are polyphonic as well. And I know that the VCV modules are, because next I'm going to put in LFO, because I want to add the modulation effect. And then... What I'm going to do is add a VCA right there. Where did it put it? I thought I selected a VCA. I guess I didn't. All right, let's try again. There we go. And then... I want to add the fade module, which is a crossfader. And I'll explain why in a moment. I believe this is it, but let me double check. Yeah. There we go. And we could sandwich these together now. Okay. Now, the reason why I want to do the uh, fade module here is because in amplitude modulation, I would like to be able to move the mod wheel to control bringing the amplitude modulation in, and as the mod wheel goes up, I want it to become more present. And uh, so in that case, if you want that gradual change between um, having amplitude modulation in and um, taking it out and still having sound... <laughs> Um, you want to be able to crossfade them in and out. Let me show you, for example, if I took the output from here and put it in here to the VCA and then take this sine output here to get a nice smooth sine shape to the modulation and put it in here, we are now going to get amplitude modulation on the sound. Get an audio out here. I like to use red for my audio cables. There we go. All right. Now, the thing is, when we take the, we want to be able to take this in and out. Um, we don't want it on all the time. And uh, yeah, I could hook the mod wheel up here to, um, well, if I had another. VCA, or if I use the mixer module that comes with VCV, it's like a four-channel mixer, I would have another control um, thing for the whole mixer where I could control bringing it in and out. But the thing is, if I bring it out, the modulated sound, we don't get the sound unmodulated. So that's why we want this over here. Um, so for example... This audio output is going to go to input one. Or no, let's make it two. And let's make input one the audio out straight from organ time. So now, if I were to move fade here to one. Well, I kind of need to hook its output up. So there's two outputs. Since one is what we would call my unmodulated sound, I'm going to take its output and put it here. So when I turn this all the way left, this is saying all the way one. Unmodulated. Turn it all the way right. And it's all modulated. And you get a little bit in between. 
so you can kind of control the amount of modulation. Let me reset that to be center because we're going to control this with the mod wheel. That's one of the things the mod wheel will control. Now, we have a fade knob up here. We do have a fade input here where if you used the MIDI CC module that I showed you first, you could hook a cable up to it and have mod wheel, or actually this module has a mod wheel out. Right here. We hook this up here. Let's turn this down a little bit like that. Now when I move the mod wheel up, it's all the way one. And when I move it down, it's partially two because this is controlling the degree to mo of module, the degree of crossfade, uh, basically that you're getting. Now, if I turn it to the right side, now when I have it, uh, there and the mod wheels all the way down right now, now it's up. Now it's down. Now, if I put this center, mod wheels down, we still hear it. Turn it up, we still hear it the same. So nothing happens. So you can see that this um, offset control here is not going to really give us what we're looking for because what I want to do is have the mod wheel control it from all the way one up to all the way two, like the two extremes of this knob. This guy over here does that for us. So I'm going to make sure we're scrolled all the way down and I'm going to hit map here. Move the mod wheel, which is controller one. And I'll click this knob here. There we go. The mod wheel's all the way down. Then the knob went down to match it. So now I can move it up and down. Now, what we also want is uh, kind of like the rate of modulation to be controlled as well. And um, that can be done with uh, the mod wheel output here. I mean, we could map it, but then what we'd get is if we mapped it straight to this knob using this guy here, we would get a range from all the way down, all the way up, and uh, the modulation rate gets too fast for it to be useful. For example, I'll just show you. Hold on, turn the mod wheel up so we can hear it. Yeah, for Hammond organ sound, that's not, <laughs> that's not appropriate. So we're basically going to want to be able to control its range. And we can do that with our control right here. Now I have uh, it coming into frequency modulation. So what I can do is that will modulate this rate for me. Um, it will speed it up and slow it down. And what I need to do is use a combination of a setting here and a setting here to um, kind of control how far I want it to go. So I have my mod wheel all the way down, which means we're not going to hear anything because the amount is all the way down as well, since this is following it. Um, what we can do to set these properly is by pipe, hmm, bypass this temporarily okay so i'm going to disconnect this and take this output from the modulated sound and make it the only thing going out so we're going to hear modulation no matter what now because i want to be able to move the mod wheel and set its range properly without having this shutting on and off there we go so what is the slowest we want
I'm moving the mod wheel just to see. Now this turning it down here is going to make it slow down. So we don't really want that. As I turn the mod wheel up, I want it to speed up. So we need to turn this up. That's about the rate that I want it to be. And this we set to the lowest. That's too slow of a modulation. Right about there. How about that? So now that's my lowest. I'm going to turn the mod wheel up again. And since I adjusted the lower value with this knob, I need to turn this down again. Just playing that key because it's easier to reach. Now that's with the mod wheel all the way down. That's kind of deceptive because actually when we have it down, we won't be hearing it anymore. So I'm going to hook this back up and hear how it sounds. This goes into here and this goes into here. So now let's move the mod wheel. Now you can adjust it to your liking. Just remember this is your upper max and this is going to be your lower min. But remember, when you move the mod wheel down, this rate isn't going to be heard anyway because we're cross-fading it out. And so now... I basically have these controls at my fingertips um these two switches here no i don't but um you know i guess you just got to use the mouse for those there are control buttons on keyboards that you can use Actually, I have some here, but I don't really want to do it because I've found that I usually just set this. And um, leave it the way I set it. Don't need to change it on the fly. To be honest with you, I do like this up percussive sound it doesn't seem as drastic to me so there we go there are a few basics now i'll be working on the sound a bit more so i might do another episode when for example it'd be nice to add a little vibrato to the sound which would help it sound mm, 
Well, really, like if we were trying to model a Leslie speaker um, that would spin at the rate of modulation, this gives us the amplitude modulation aspect of it, but would also have a, um, a frequency spectrum bias. So it might be something where you would put a filter and have the filter also oscillate with it, if it's the right kind of filter. In fact, should I go for it? Should I give that a shot? Uh, man, yeah, I mean, I shouldn't have mentioned it or else, you know. So let's do this. VCF. And I know, now, this may not be perfect, but this is at least something, as an idea of something you can play with. This filter here is from Surge XT. It's another free module. It's their VCF. And uh, basically I like it because you could get a whole plethora of filter shapes here and uh, try them out. And what we would want to do is oscillate this filter shape with the sound. So what I'm going to do is put this in here. Now what you might want to do is set up another crossfade. Um, so you can have uh, control over the amount of filtering. But if you set it just right, you know, you might be happy with that sound overall. Um, so let me do this, where basically we're just going to go into the left mono input and output of Surge XT. <laughs> Now, what I'm going to do is move this to something like... Um, the notching now what we could do here is widen this a little bit hold on let me check am I on the I'm on the resonance there we go make it a little wider let's move it up here So it's out of the way, but what we'd want to do is have it move like that. Okay. Now what we can do to achieve that is hook up our... We could use a triangle wave for that. Gonna hook it up to modulation one, the input there. And then the beauty about Surge XT is you can set your range this way. Um, where do I want this to normally be? Somewhere like that. And we'll have this modulate it down so it's cutting higher frequencies, almost like a speaker turning away from you and then coming back where you allow those frequencies back in. You might want to use a low pass for that, but I think the notch might work, I don't know, a little bit more naturally. It's a little less drastic, but let's see. So I'm going to turn you on and then move the knob that this is going to affect. There we go. Beautiful. Now, I think we do want another crossfade. Because, I wonder if I duplicate this, if it will duplicate the mapping. I don't think so. It'll probably have a different identifier on it. But let's just see. 
Because essentially, I do want it to move with the same mod wheel settings. Okay, so now let's move you to here. Number two is always going to be our dry. Now I'm trying to think. Um, hmm, hmm, hmm. This might be adding too much to the sound. Oh, oh, I know what. Just take it out of here. There we go. Right there. So it will have. Oh, I didn't hook it up. It'll have the crossfaded sound from the first crossfade. Good. And then we hook you up. Yeah, let's zoom out a little bit. So there you visually see it moving, but it's not. And we're only getting amplitude modulation because the mod wheel is not controlling this knob yet. So we go back over here. And... Um, Let's double check, make sure it should be the right one. That says controller one. Yep. So that's the mod wheel. So we left click it to make sure it's listening. And we'll click you. There we go. At that rate, it sounds just a little meh. When it gets to the fast rate, it sounds great slow. There, it's a little bit. Um, let me see here. Um, let's try a different filter shape. Remember, I was saying maybe a low pass. Yeah, let's try that one. That's a little better. Let's actually slow this upper range down a bit, which is this knob here. There. What you could do is play with this mod range here like if i move this now since this is highlighted blue because i still have this mod button on it's still altering range here go so you can play with that a bit there i took a risk and it worked out there because actually that does sound better with some filtering on it and creating a bit of a you know the leslie effect is going to basically sound like as that speaker turns around it'll be turning towards you and away from you as a listener and when it's away it's dulling the frequency spectrum as well as reducing the amplitude
all right there you go folks so that's a little bit about taking your um midi controller keyboard and turning it into a hammond organ kind of uh, i don't think it's quite the same thing but it's it's actually pleasantly close okay so until next time folks uh, thank you for joining me if you found this useful at all or even if you didn't uh, hit that like button and um, maybe leave a comment help keep me from feeling lonely until next time take care